Our board is diverse. Uh, you are the youngest female CEO in a Fortune 100 company. Your board has 10 members. Uh, we counted six are women and three are people of color. So is that um, part of who you are now in terms of propelling you forward and your, and your focus on, on d and and also doing better? And do you have goals on diversity for the coming five or 10 years? Yeah, so as it relates to the board composition, I think all of us on the management team would say um, we are pushed to think differently and are given feedback that is incredibly thoughtful and much more diverse in its nature because we have such a diverse board. And it's diverse in all the ways you could want. It's wildly diverse in terms of experience. It's diverse in terms of gender, ethnicity, background. I mean, it, it, it is diverse on all levels, which means it, when we, and, and it's a very supportive board for us. So when we have conversations, they come from each of their own places of life experience and ask amazing questions. And then it also means so many of us and so many of our employees can look at our board and see themselves in roles like that someday. And I think that is also an amazing example for our employees. We have had a number of goals and I'm, I'm gonna run through a little bit of a laundry list of some of the things we're doing. And I would only do that because I think this is something you need to work on from all angles and you need to constantly iterate and change and, and talk about. So um, from a uh, recruitment standpoint, um, we've been very intentional about hiring in a diverse way. Um, but we also, we know that recruitment starts young. And so we've been focused on our Best Buy Team Tech Centers. We just committed to a hundred of them. And those are centers that are all over the US and they are aimed at more underprivileged areas and their after school programs for starting in middle school up through high school um, students to give them access to technology and technology they might not otherwise have and to hopefully point them towards some uh, STEM careers. And we're already seeing great results in terms of much higher likelihood to want to graduate, much higher likelihood to want uh, to go to college. Um, we also have a corporate work study program where we have internships um, and often mentorships that are through some of our, especially our black employee resource group that helps bring some of those um, interns on and, and gives them visibility to what corporate life could look like. Um, we hold numerous on-campus hiring events and we really have been partnering closely with the uh, historically black colleges and universities. Um, and in fact, we were ranked number 11 on HBCU's Connects list of top 50 employers for HBCU students. And we funded a $2.5 million scholarship at the U of M here in Minnesota to try to take first generation uh, students from our te teen tech centers and get them into colleges and then hopefully get them back into amazing companies here in Minnesota, hopefully Best Buy, but frankly, uh, any of these companies because it creates such a virtuous cycle. Um, we have a robust mentorship program. I talked about the reverse mentorship program um, and we've been sponsoring about 40 of our employees to uh, attend the executive leadership conference um, which is aimed at giving high potential black leaders um, more visibility and uh, put them on the path to become officers. Um, we made Juneteenth a holiday this year and we gave every employee eight hours because it, it was, we made it a holiday close to the date, eight hours anytime to go volunteer or protest or have their voice heard. And we have shortened our hours already on election day to make sure everyone has a chance to vote um, and has their voice heard there. We post our numbers, meaning all of our diversity um, progress and all of our ESG reporting. So you can see just what our population looks like. Um, and one of the most important things, and I'll stop, um, we, we said out loud that we are creating a task force of a very cross-functional, diverse, multiple level group of people at Best Buy who can help teach us and help propose what we think the next round of commitments should be at Best Buy. Um, and we didn't want to just Put those commitments out there from our own perspective we wanted our employees to help us create and probably push us to make commitments that we might not otherwise um, and so i think you'll you can expect to see another round of commitments that will be highly informed by our own employees in the near future well that is a very impressive list of things um, um that's terrific uh, you know we have a foundation and it, what it does is it links up people with disabilities and people who are older with technology and i couldn't help but notice that Best Buy has made significant investments in um, technology for people that are older that will enhance their lives. And also, um, when I met with you a year ago at your headquarters, you, you 
you talked about your focus on healthcare and why it's important. Can you talk about both those things, both seniors and healthcare? And obviously, there's a huge overlap there. Yeah, I'm going to start with the healthcare question. Um, and you said it, I started with our purpose being to enrich lives through technology. And we believe that we do that by addressing real human needs. An example right now is most of us need <laughs> to work at home. And how do we create that technology suite that's going to help you work at home? But one of the needs that we saw was certainly in health and specifically to help uh, people age in their homes longer with the help of technology. I mean, we have an aging um, uh, a country, frankly. We have 10,000 people turning 65 every day. Um, and the population is living longer, which is wonderful. Uh, but as is evidenced even more so in the pandemic that we're in, we definitely have more people who want to stay home longer, if at all possible. And so we have been thinking about the health aspect of our business from multiple angles. The first is just broadly. There is so much technology that's coming to light. Gary, you see it all the time. I mean, at, at CES last year, there was a whole building dedicated to health technology that hadn't even existed before. Um, and there, so A, there is just a massive amount of technology so that we can take care of our own health. I mean, right now in my own house, I have, you know, a, a, I can take my own temperature, I can take my blood pressure, I have a pulse oximeter, and all of those things I could get for, you know, under $200, and I can, I can monitor my health. But importantly, we also think you can connect a number of things together that will help, um, you know, my parents and, and my grandma's 100, um, that can help them be comfortable, but can help me also as a caregiver have some visibility to how they're doing. Like I can see with some basic sensors, is grandma opening the fridge? Is she going to the bathroom regularly? Is she getting up from her chair occasionally? Or in the worst case scenario, has she fallen? And what tools does she have if something so we believe strongly this combination that we have at Best Buy, which is both the tech, but also the touch, the human touch, the ability to go into people's homes, the ability to talk directly with you and help you come up with the best solution. We think there's a real opportunity there for us to help people not just buy the stuff, but to put it together in a way that will um, provide peace of mind for both someone who maybe wants to age in their home, but also a caregiver like me who might not be able to be with that person 100% of the time. So. This sounds personal to you. Are, are you a caregiver? I am. I am a caregiver. So my grandma, I think we're, and by the way, I would say, I think more of us are caregivers than will personally identify as being caregivers. So my grandma is 100. She is in a light care facility, but she's got basically an apartment. So she lives here uh, by us. She's about a half hour away. And so we, we look after her. But even my parents, my dad lives alone on 10 acres here in Minnesota. My mom and stepdad, they live um, by themselves. And think about right now, the, the world that we're living in, how I stay in touch with them, how we stay connected to them, because this isn't just always physical wellness, it's mental wellness, connection, um, all of them, I, in some way, shape or form, I feel like I have some level of caregiving for them. Uh, and in every one of those cases, I'm using technology right now in ways I wasn't before in order to stay connected and, and hopefully to make sure I, I have confidence that they're doing yeah, I think we're um, this COVID nineteen has accelerated our focus on that, and obviously it's also increased loneliness and our just physical ability to be with those we love. But uh, I'm excited that technology is increasingly going to provide answers. In fact, just this week, lost in the other big announcement, we announced a um, that we are as an organization convening a lot of major people in the healthcare world to focus on the next big uh, health problem and how we could. We use technology to solve it, and that includes companies like CVS and other uh, healthcare providers, hospital groups, things like that. Because we really believe that technology is a, an amazing solution to the challenges we face in the future. And and I think these wearables, the most Journal has a story today about how wearables are making such a difference now, and just even the ability to figure out if you have COVID, uh, rapid rapid growth in that area. And that's why I think we're we're making a difference, and that has been a growing area not only for CES, but for, for our entire industry. And I imagine with uh, Best Buy's acquisition of Break Call, with, uh, with your personal focus and intensity on this, that will be uh, a great area in the future as well. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you 1,000%. And I, um, before COVID, I felt like the one space that had yet to be materially disrupted by technology was healthcare. And as 
the pandemic has broadened your point is I think it's only exacerbated and probably will accelerate the level of innovation and technology disruption that we will continue to see in healthcare in a very good way. And this is the, 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 the happy disruption. This is the pen that I like because I think it, it will put more of our own care in our own hands and we will control, control more of it. And we will also be able to interact with others and have better visibility to the care of others, uh, which I think that world, that world makes me feel better, but it'll still be confusing. And I think people will need help sorting 